On this episode of Expert Answers, we're looking at the coronavirus pandemic's impact on migrants and remittances, or the money that they send back home. Just last year, remittances were on the rise, becoming ever more important in the world of development economics. But as the world has moved into quarantine, remittances have taken a hit. To get the latest, I recently sat down with the World Bank's lead economist for remittances, Dilip Ratha. Dilip, it's really good to see you again. Let's start with the big question. You and your team have this new report out. Give us the headlines. What do we need to know? Well, remittance flows this year are going to be impacted seriously. They would be down, we expect, by 20%. That would take the numbers down, the remittance flows to low and middle income countries down from 554 billion last year to about 445 billion this year in 2020. And that is a remittance, uh, wow. that is a lifeline to poor countries. And uh, this r rupture of the lifeline to poor countries can have significant impacts on a large number of countries as well as poor people. The human aspect of the decline in the flows is uh, not to be underestimated because when you are talking about large flows like foreign direct investment, it is companies that are sending money. The small sums of money that migrants send, they are in $50, $100, $200 terms. So we are now talking about hundreds of millions, if not a billion people, maybe even more than a billion people getting impacted because of the drop in remittance flows. Is that the result of the pandemic itself? Or are there other factors at play here uh, in this 20% drop you're talking about? The main uh, impetus for the decline comes from the, the crisis itself, the COVID-19 crisis, the lockdowns, the uh, social distancing, the inability to travel because of travel bans, that has sequestered people wherever they are. Uh, they are not able to send money, but they, the main impact will come from the fact that people are not getting jobs. So migrants are more vulnerable during times of crisis than native born people, and they will lose jobs or their incomes will fall. So their ability to send money would go down. That is the main impetus. Let's just go back to basics for a second. It may be obvious to some, but but why is this decline so ex significant? And can you maybe explain for those who it's maybe a little less obvious to the link between migration, remittances, and poverty? There are about 270 million international migrants in the world. That's not a lot in some ways, but 270 million migrants, international migrants, send money home about 554 billion last year, 445 billion this year. This impact, this is migrants sending money to their families. So for every migrant, maybe there are two, three, four people back home. And when they receive money, they use that for food, for housing, for clothing, for business investment, for sending children to school, for healthcare. So when they send money home, uh, when they migrate and send money home, it has huge poverty reduction impact. Remittances are actually a lifeline to a large number of households, and especially poor households. If remittances decline, they would fall into poverty. Dilip, I want to talk to you about the regional patterns here. You know, Is this effect across the board, or are some regions being hit harder than others? The um, impact is global. Uh, so all regions are going to be impacted. And again, to put things in perspective a bit, the decline in remittance flows this year is going to be historically uh, a record. It, we have never seen any decline of this kind before since we started monitoring data from the 1980s onwards. In 2009 global financial crisis, there was a drop in remittances of about 5%, but then it bounced back quickly by 2010 remittance flows to low and middle income countries were uh, above the pre-crisis level. Just right. to underscore that, and, and for people who are just tuning in, what you're saying today is remittances have dropped 20% amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Compare that to the global financial crisis of 2008, where they dropped just 5%, which is a significant drop, but relative to today, it, it looks rather small. Absolutely. This is unprecedented. And that is because the global financial crisis was somewhat localized. It, 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 we do use the term global there, but actually it affected a, 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 a few countries much more than the entire world. 
And it was not a good thing, not to imply that it was a good thing. It, people did suffer. But this crisis is affecting every country in the world. And it is so comprehensive that it is beginning to affect economic activities in remote villages as well, everywhere in the world. Let's talk through some of the solutions and some of the measures that could soften the impact. You've broken down the policy response into three areas. Can you explain that for us? Well, the, the uh, most immediate uh, policy measure that uh, we need is to think that uh, a large number of migrants are also human beings and they are there and they are concentrated in, in, in our community, especially in the urban areas, urban economic centers. And these people as human beings need to be included in our responses to the virus. They should be part of our healthcare responses as well as social protection, cash transfers, uh, access to housing kind of responses. So that is the most important uh, and most urgent policy uh, recommendation. Also, uh, remittance services, remittances sent by these people is a, a lifeline to a large number of people out there and remittance services have been disrupted during the crisis. So recognizing remittance services as essential services might help open some of these stores and that would facilitate remittance flows. Getting That's the those, second. those cash points where people transfer the money from the country they've moved to back to their home country. And you were, you were talking about that earlier. Exactly. That is the second important uh, policy uh, message that I would like to convey. And uh, the third area is that we know that uh, uh, perhaps the only way now for sending money is through digital means, through mobile money, through mobile phones or through internet. And yet we also know that the, the, the poor people, uh, irregular migrants, those working in informal sector, and that applies to international migrants as well as internal migrants, they are um, actually unbanked and being banked having a, access to a bank account is, and, and a credit card is often critical to uh, be able to use digital means to send money home. And yet, these people don't have access. So there is an urgent need to try to bring these people into the uh, banking sector to make them banked so that they can use digital means. Thank you so much and thanks for your time. This has been really fascinating and informative. Thank you, thanks Paul. A huge thanks to Dilip Rafa for his time. If you want to learn more about the World Bank and its response to the coronavirus pandemic, head on over to worldbank.org forward slash coronavirus. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe. Goodbye.